Hi guys, how you guys doing? Are you having a good week? We're gonna be starting a new series called Keep It Real, and we're gonna be learning stories about how God is real. But before we get into today's story, let's get up on our feet and go do some worship. Here we go. Promise. 
Okay, boys and girls, did you see that? We are in a new series, Keep It Real, which means that we have a new memory verse. Are you guys ready to learn it? I know I am. It goes, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19, 21. All right, you guys ready to do it again? I know I am. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19, 21. Okay, have fun learning it. Bye. Hey everyone, have you ever had a problem? I'm talking about a big problem. Bigger than this or this that's really, really big and seems impossible to fix or solve? Well, today we're going to be talking about how God is real and bigger than any problem we face. In the big God story, God rescued his servants, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from a blazing fire. Do you guys remember? And God showed that he is real. Today, we're going to be talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's friend, Daniel, and how God showed everyone he is real through Daniel's life. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel lived in a place called Babylon, and Babylon was eventually taken over by a country called Persia. Now imagine it's about 60 years later from the time when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were rescued from the fiery furnace. Daniel, he's an old man now, and after taking Babylon, the king of Persia met Daniel and decided that he liked Daniel. Did he like Daniel this much? Or this much? He really, really liked Daniel, so he made Daniel a leader in his kingdom. Now, let's get out our Bibles and turn to Daniel, which is in the Old Testament, and we're gonna be looking at chapter six in verse three. Let's see. Find that big six and the little three, and it says, now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So the king even thought about putting Daniel in charge of the entire kingdom. But this, it made the other leaders jealous. Also, they didn't like that Daniel loved and followed God. Daniel didn't just follow God a little bit or this much. Daniel really followed God. Daniel knew that God is real. And three times a day, Daniel opened his windows, got down on his knees, and Daniel prayed to God for help. While Daniel prayed for God's people, the jealous leaders thought of a way to kill Daniel. Were they a little jealous or this jealous? Say it with me. They were really, really jealous of Daniel. So they made a plan to kill him. They tricked the king into signing a special announcement that said for a whole month, no one could ask anything of God or pray to God. They could only ask the king for what they wanted. If they didn't, they would be killed by lions. Now let's read in chapter six again in verse six to eight. So it says, so these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, may King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now your majesty issued the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. So the king sent out the announcement to the entire kingdom. The leaders did all of this because they knew Daniel would not stop praying to God. He worshiped God who is real. This might seem like a scary situation for Daniel, but let's see what he did in verse 10. It says, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. Daniel wasn't afraid of anything, including lions, because he knew that God is real. Did Daniel believe in God this much or this much? Daniel knew deep in his heart that God is real. So Daniel kept praying to the one true God. And when the jealous leaders saw this, they told the king about it. And what could the king do? He had made a law that can't be changed, and now his favorite leader was going to die because of it. 
The king tried and tried to find a way to rescue Daniel, but there was nothing he could do. Daniel would have to be thrown into the lion's den. Back in the days of the Persian Empire, many kings would keep lions in big pits in the ground or in their dens, and he, they would starve them. They did this so the lions would gobble up anybody they threw into the pit. How hungry were those lions? Were they this hungry or this hungry? No, they were really, really hungry. The king gave the order and Daniel was thrown into the pit of lions. The next morning, the king woke up and he hurried to the pit to the lions. Now we'll see in verse 20 to 22. Are you ready? Let's find that. It says, when he came near the den, this is the king, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Isn't that amazing? Daniel was alive. Daniel's God is real. Our God is real. And the king removed Daniel from the pit and saw that the lions hadn't hurt him. The Bible says no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. The king knew that God had saved Daniel because God is real. So the king sent out a new announcement. So let's read it in verses 26 to 27. It says, next page. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. This announcement told everyone to worship the one true God. Throughout this part of the big God story, Daniel knew God is real, really real. Daniel prayed to God and God saved him from the lion's den and changed the king's heart. Daniel's faith made it possible for everyone to see that God is real. God still does amazing things when his people pray. We can trust that when we pray to God, he hears us and he answers us in his way. And we know that we can trust that his way is the best way. And we know that God is real. So let's pray. Ready? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for this story that teaches us that you are real and you are bigger than any problem we face. I pray, Lord, that we would remember to trust in you and to look to you no matter what we go through. May we remember that you are bigger than anything, God, and you can shut the mouths of lions. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, let's go do our craft. Okay, guys, so to help me with my craft today, we have Mr. John, still in his king outfit. <laughs> What king well, are you like today? Three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> he really likes his crown. I should color it. Oh gosh, that's not this craft right now. Do it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> so today, what we're gonna be making is this cool origami thing. So you can show the line on the front and the mouth is open, but God shut the mouths of the lion. So what you're gonna need to do is have your parents print off this printable right here, and first you're going to color. That would be me. Blue, what's gonna be blue? Oh, I don't know. Lion? No, the, I didn't the sky in the background, of course. Okay, well, Mr. John's gonna take a really long time. Oh, yeah, guys! Yay, of course. <laughs> Finally, so and we still didn't finish the whole thing. <laughs> You're gonna cut out along this outer line to make your, cut out your big giant square. So do that, be okay, careful. That. Scissors are not a toy. All right, now that we have mine's colored, so first step, you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it in half along that line in the middle. Boop. You wanna make sure you're folding along those lines to make sure everything lines up. All right, now open it again and fold it in half the other way along the other line. Okay. Okay, so we So open it again. It, and then we open it. Okay, now you're gonna go diagonal. Diagonal? So fold it in half that way, okay. make two triangles. Open it again. Looks like a quesadilla. Yeah, don't eat it. <laughs> Fold it in half again, like a triangle the other way. The other way. You have lots and lots of creases in your paper. Uh. Ready? Open. Now, flip it over. Now you're gonna take one corner. Stop, no. 
All right, now in every corner, you're gonna take the corner and you're gonna pull it towards the middle, line it up with the middle, and you're gonna fold it down. So it'll look like that. And you're gonna keep going around and around and around. Mine's already folded, so it's easy to fold down. And you're gonna end up with this. Who came up with this? I don't know, somebody. All right, you got it? Flip it over. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take the corner and you're gonna put it towards the middle. And then you'll have it like this, and you're gonna fold it in half. So now you can stick your pointer finger and your thumb on each hand in the little. You're gonna take your pointer well, finger and your thumb part. and you're gonna stick it right there and you're gonna stick your other ones in the other side. I can't get the flap. <laughs> and you're gonna close it together. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so now you have your origami line and you can tell your story and show how the lions were really hungry, but God shut the mouths of the lions. Bye. 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 <laughs>